To go through that, it made you feel like you were nothing. It made you feel that you were not even a second-class citizen, but you weren't a citizen, you were not a human being. This week, we've been examining the issue of racism in Canada. And tonight, we want to take you to a small community in southwestern Ontario to look back at a moment in history. 60 years ago, a small group sat down in a restaurant in Dresden and made a big difference. Nick Purden joined two of that group as they revisited the community and a civil rights victory. Bromley Armstrong and his old friend Ruth Lore Malloy are searching for a restaurant. Halfway down it was Mackay's and then further down it was Anderson's. Yeah. A restaurant where they made history. No, it was bigger than that. A restaurant that back in 1954 wouldn't serve black people. It doesn't really matter that the restaurant isn't here anymore. What matters is what Bromley and Ruth did here. That's disappeared too. Two times. Yep. Okay, they think Mackay's was back here. Mackay's where? Where the eye doctor is now. Have we reached the eye doctor yet? I don't see an eye doctor. Oh, we passed it then. And that things in Dresden and across the country have changed. Right here. In part because of them. Looking inside, I couldn't recognize that's the same place. Bring back memories. What kind of memories? Memories of being refused even a cup of coffee. That was the reality for people of color all across the country. If you can't imagine it, have a look at this. Dresden is a small place, 2,000 people, about 12% colored. But there are just nine business establishments in town that refuse service to colored people. Why? What Dresden, Ontario, the site of Uncle Tom's Cabin, a spot along the Underground Railroad, and a battleground for the civil rights movement in Canada, led locally by this man. Mr. Burnett, a carpenter and secretary of the National Unity Association, would you say that uh, racial discrimination is a recent thing in Dresden? I wouldn't say it's too recent. It's been going on for over 100 years, or around 100 years. And it's been as bad uh, as long as I can remember as it is now. You can't force anybody to, to, to serve anybody at any time. Many people seem to think so. If they continue, there will be civil war in Canada in spite of themselves. Do you think this will be the... the this, is the this is the showdown. Tensions were high. A new anti-discrimination law had just passed in Ontario, but nothing had changed, even when activists set up stings at businesses to prove racism. Legislation was necessary. We needed to do Enter Bromley and Ruth. They did something different. When they went to the restaurant that day in October of 1954, they brought along a reporter to bear witness and tell the story. Were you served or were you not served? No. I wasn't served. served because we were together. If but I the had. The reporter was served. The reporter was served. He was separate in a different table. They were in a separate All booth. watching. They were in a separate mm -hmm. booth. As if they didn't know you. Yeah. yeah. Nobody approached us. I got out. I went across to the waitress standing there like a mannequin. And I says, Good afternoon. Um, is it possible to get some service? I'd like to have a coffee and something to eat. She never batted an eyelid. And I finally said to her, um, is there a manager? Could I see the manager? And she went, in other words, the manager was at the back. So I went to the back, and that was Mr. McKay. He was over a butcher block with a meat cleaver in his hand. Chop, 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 chop. And he'd start, you could see that his countenance was changing, like the blood was getting up into his head and into his face, and he started chopping faster and faster and faster, with nothing on the, on, the, on, the, on the butcher block. Then I got to the point and I said, don't push your luck, because you never know. And I went back to the table, because we have had all the evidence we needed then. Bromley and Ruth's bravery did become national news. The restaurant owners were convicted, they paid a fine, and Canada took an important step toward racial equality. That, to me, was the defining point in, in this whole struggle, that a group of just individuals like Ruth Lauren and myself got involved in something 
that change the whole history of Ontario and, and to make us all feel equal. It became one of the highlights of my life, one of the best achievements I think I've done with my life. We had finally reached not the end of the road, but the beginning of changing life for people like ourselves. Nick Purden, CBC News, Dresden, Ontario.